This is Nick Coffer on BBC Three Counties Radio. It's 2.13. Now, vocal harmonies, it says here, can often make our hearts melt and go a little gooey. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll accept that. Brit Award-winning trio Blake are guilty of having this effect. I should point out this was written by Nia. So, <laughs> Nia, if this is the effect that it has on you, then all the better. Especially on their female fans. There we go. And uh, even the royal family too. Their first ever live performance was to an audience of over 90,000 people at Wembley Stadium. And since then, they've performed at Buckingham Palace on numerous occasions. Much to Nia's disappointment, they haven't performed in her front room. The band, now in their seventh year, are back on the road and they're heading to the three counties three shows actually milton Keynes, uh, high wickham and st albans i spoke to the boys last week and i began by asking them if it was an urban myth that they all formed on facebook well going back seven and a half years ago we did indeed uh, get back together on facebook we all went to music colleges in london to guildhall school of music and drama and the royal academy as well um and when you're studying there you meet people you come up with musical ideas you chat about things in the bar and then life moves on and you start getting normal jobs maybe even boring jobs selling fish or being a teacher in a school things like that and we just started having this conversation over facebook about what it'd be like to try and mix together some of the different forms of music we'd all enjoyed over the years including the classical we'd all trained for but also mixing it in with pop music and since we all came from choral backgrounds we'd all sung in choirs at various times we just loved the idea of mixing that all together with a harmony style and um, a few rehearsals later and Blake was born and it was really simple as that you see I, I've known a few people particularly who've studied at Guildhall I, I dated one actually uh, for, for quite a Did few you? years and my experience of them is that it, a it's a very 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 tough course but b it's even tougher to find if I say proper work, what I mean is the kind of work you'd hope to find, having trained as opera singers, choral singers and, and musicians. Did that reality hit you all when that, you came out? That's, yeah. I think, that's I think that sums up, generally sums up the whole music industry, to be honest. I mean, I, I was at the academy up the road, and I think when you go to any of these conservatoires, you you know, it's very hard to get into, and you study very hard, and it's a bit of a bubble, and then you come out into the real wide world, and and you are one of many, many very, very talented people. And so I think it's it's a very good thing that we've done that because now that we're lucky enough to be in a successful group and we work and travel the world and there literally is not a day that doesn't go by where you, you sort of thank your lucky stars because you know, mm. if you're a freelance musician, just how difficult it is and how many talented people are out there. Although having said that, Stephen, your uh, remembrances of music college are far nobler than mine. I, I remember far less days discussing musical ideas and far <laughs> more sitting at the bar. But, but there we go, so it's each to his own. But the bar is very important for it, musicians. It, it, um, true, yes. It is actually, in fairness, it's where a lot of friendships are forged. Um, <laughs> whilst we were studying, in fact, whilst we were at Guildhall, we had Orlando Bloom was on the acting course across the corridor, as it were, as well. She used to drink with him in the bar. There's a lot of great people who've come from Guildhall, and I'm not counting ourselves <laughs> in that particularly, but these colleges are, are where a lot of talent gets fostered, so it's great to be from there. The thing also about bars, I, I, I know that when it comes to singing, it's all about how you support it, you know, just below your diaphragm and, and if you're sitting at high bars on high stools you're in effect building that inner trunk absolutely aren't you? Yeah, it's <laughs> all about okay, you know maintaining core strength core Very strength true, and, yeah. and, and bars are a perfect place to do that <laughs> talking of talking of urban myths or not as to whether you did actually form on facebook am i right in saying that you, your first official proper public life performance was in front of ninety thousand people that was Wembley Stadium. It was, yeah, it's, it's odd how sometimes in some people's careers you do things backwards. Um, now we're performing in kind of wonderful, very intimate, you know, 500, 600 seat theatres as we tour around the UK, especially this autumn. That's the kind of theatres that we'll be concentrating on. Um, but the very first gig was 90,000 people. It was for the uh, Charity Cup Shield. Um, and it was an awesome experience. We'd sung before in rehearsal rooms and then suddenly we were kind of kicked unceremoniously up the tunnel. <laughs> Um, sorry, that sounded rather odd. Um, and put put on the pitch in front of 90,000 people. And, and there we were with our hands shaking, trying to do the right thing by all those fans of football. And we sang uh, Ness and Dorma and, and God Save the Queen. So it was quite a moment. Are you thinking at that moment, OK, I've got nothing to lose. This is it. I've just got to go for it. Or are you thinking unprintable expletives or unspeakable <laughs> expletives on the radio? And, and we're wondering how you got there. <laughs> I think in front of 90,000 football fans, you've got everything to lose. and um, Especially at the beginning of your career as well. <laughs> 
<laughs> walking on them introducing us as Blake and 90,000 people going who the hell are Flake uh, excuse the expletive there I think uh, we'll let that go on the BBC uh, but yeah no it was it was uh, it was a dramatic experience and I do remember one of one of us actually um, shaking for about a week afterwards and having to go and have some uh, mild therapy on how to not get a microphone shake in public but uh, I, I don't doubt it because you've got that whole <coughs> adrenaline rush before the whole adrenaline rush during and then you, your body just plummets afterwards but it's very in true. effect you're still yeah. the adrenaline's still there so yeah. you, you, you're physically shaking I, I don't doubt that for a minute yeah it's also that thing of when you get the opportunity to go not just the singing but just going to those sorts of venues you know if you're a sports fan we're all big sports fans just the adrenaline of being allowed to walk out onto the the hallowed turf of a Wembley or a Twickenham or even smaller but probably the most exciting one we did was the opening of the new roof at Wimbledon um, and you're not no one's allowed to walk on that mm. hallowed bit of grass and to stand there and do it I mean before you've even sung anything you're already pretty uh, pretty shaky we, and we are I think to this day the only people who've been allowed apart from uh, Royals when they're awarding trophies to walk on centre court in normal shoes so I, there you go interesting fact I still think it would have been much cooler had they had you performing on the roof as it, <laughs> as, as it was closing how dramatic would that have been we well, I'm not sure anyone would have heard us then uh, maybe that's your point <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I bet you did want to do it though uh, talking of nerves you're, you're perhaps among the band's most loved by royalty you've performed in front of your fair share of uh, royal family members not only here but abroad as well haven't you we yeah. have. It's funny you say that. I'm still waiting for the invitation for the wedding, which never turned up. But um, <laughs> no, we uh, we've been very very fortunate to do a lot of performances uh, at the palace itself, at Buckingham Palace, and um, at uh, the Albert Hall. Uh, and it's it's always a great privilege. And uh, as you say, we've we've also performed with for some pretty um, extraordinary dignitaries around the globe. So I think it's the, because the sort of music that we do. Um, you know, sometimes if we're doing a cappella, it's very intimate and emotional. If we're doing the big stuff, it's very powerful and dramatic and and so it can suit those more sort of formal occasions um and generally when there's a royal in the house they want something big and impressive and mm. so we're very lucky and uh, and it's not always that memorable as one of the boys would tell you from was it your first performance at the albert hall with old uh, philip uh, oh yes philip. yeah no yeah. we did we, we we saw um uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, a, a, literally a day, maybe two days later, at an event, uh, and this was after we just performed for them for the Royal Festival of Remembrance in the Albert Hall, and um, we met him, and he said, "We said, um, hey, Royal Highness, it was a huge honour uh, to to sing for you yesterday in the Albert Hall," uh, and he replied, "Oh." Was I in the Albert Hall yesterday? <laughs> so, so there we go. So we clearly had a huge, yep. a huge influence on them. You pretty much left your mark. Memorable. <laughs> <laughs> talking talk, talk of leaving your mark, though, your, your links with the royal family um, have led you to, to work with Walking with the Wounded, and, and you've, you, you penned a charity single, didn't you, called To the Sun? We did. Tell me the story behind that. Well, uh, this has come about, uh, we do a lot of, we have done a great deal of work in, over the years with military charities. We were involved in the fundraising from the very beginning of the Bomber Command and Help for Heroes and the big matches at Twickenham. And, and then through a, a personal friend of mine who is very much involved with the founding and running of Walking with the Wounded, um, we said, please, can we can we get involved? So we worked with a great songwriter um, called Alistair Griffin, and he, he penned a song which we then worked with him and did the harmonies on, uh, as you say, called To the Sun, which became the anthem for the South Pole expedition, which uh, Harry himself even went on as patron. Uh, and it was a great honour, and we sang at the launch um, of the sort of uh, to send them off on their way in, in Trafalgar Square and we met Harry there and uh, and we perform it whenever we can and um, if people want to hear it it is it is on iTunes it's available for download and every penny of it goes to to that charity which do extraordinary work they're, they're quite unusual it's not just about the rehabilitation physically um, but they help the huge number of service men and women who come back who've joined the army very young who haven't got much of an education uh, and come back into normal civilian life with a a terrible injury and the, and the mental scars as well uh, and then find it very difficult to get work and, and rehabilitate themselves into normal life so they're a, they're a fantastic charity and brilliant that you're involved with it as well but bringing it even more up to date we, we've always referred to you as a as a crossover band and now you've kind of well well and truly crossed over haven't you with, with your latest <laughs> album start over you you've, you've crossed the rubicon into full-blown non-classical pop haven't you well we, we we crossed over and now we're crossing back again that's the funniest thing i mean i think what we found over the years I mean for us the biggest thing is, is performing live we love giving concerts we love touring around the UK 
Um, we, you know, we're popping into the stables for, for two nights this August and on the 28th and the 29th, and that's always amazing fun. And when you're at concerts like that, you suddenly realize that you've got to... You've got to give the audience what they want, which is always a mixture. We love variety in our shows, and the audiences love it even more. So when we started producing further albums after the first couple, which were more classical, we started introducing the, the popular and contemporary material that people were enjoying in the shows. And now the, the latest one, which is coming up this October, which is called In Harmony, that's actually a full-on mixture of pop and classical and musicals on one album. So we've become very schizophrenic in our <laughs> musical styles. And, and you're bringing the In Harmony tour to, to our patch as well. Whitcomb Swan, I think, on the 23rd of September. September and uh, and uh, the Auburn Arena in St Albans on October the second, so they'll get a chance to see your your schizophrenic act uh, or, or your, 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 your how would you describe it? Your 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 two I like that. That's yeah. our new tagline. That's yeah. going on the post. The most schizophrenic act in the world. I, I, we are. We mix all the genres together, and the In Harmony tour later this autumn that is um, that features a lot of songs from the new album. So anybody's looking forward to that, that's the tour to go to. Um, but the ones at the stables are uh, are very 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 special it's a smaller venue it's only about 350 seats it's very very intimate almost like a cabaret club and you get to know us very well one could say possibly too well I should also say the other exciting bit for us, which we're going to continue with this tour, is we always find local choirs to come and join us. So there's very much an element of uh, local talent on stage with us, uh, and they do a solo song and then the four or five uh, numbers with us as well. So um, there should be lots of uh, parents and friends in the audience cheering on the choirs, and it, it, it adds a lovely personal touch, a kind of Gareth Malone touch to the to the gig. And it's a, it's a well-trodden path from from Amdram groups. It's always the way to sell out your shows is to get lots of local people involved. That, wasn't and even get, our thought. Get, get their aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandfathers, <laughs> and then suddenly you've got a 500 uh, uh, place full house. And before Busted. you go, I just need to ask you about your you, you lost family member. You lost Jules Knight to, to Holby City. We did. What, what happened there? Well, well, you, Jay, you've Jay, kind of just shrunk, haven't you? Jay wanted to be an actor for, for a long time. I mean, he, you know, he's a great singer, and he was one of the founding members of the group. And uh, we knew for, for a sort of nine months, a year before he left, that he was, he was looking for acting work and wanted to follow a different avenue. He's now Dr. Tr- Harry Tresler, Dr. True Love, if you like, on uh, Holby City. Um, and it, it was a shock when he left. There's no, no doubt about that. It all happened very quickly and slightly slightly uh, bad timing. But we've um, developed as a trio and uh, I think actually we're a better group for it. And uh, Jay is very happy in his acting career and we're having a whale of a time as a trio. So all is good. Happy happy days. Have you had to turn the amps up by 25% so we can hear you properly? Turn it down, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's actually, it is something about when you've got three on stage, you actually get to know the individual characters yeah. that much more when you're a quartet what tends to happen you see this in a lot of groups from Il Devo to tenors other groups like that they tend to pair off a little bit so you tend to get one group versus another um, but with three you get to know the three individuals very well and we like that it makes the show a little bit more human great stuff uh, August the 28th 29th at the Stables uh, 23rd of September at the Swan in High Wycombe and October the 2nd at the St Albans Arena in St Albans uh, Ollie Humphrey Stephen lovely to chat to you where can we find out more about Blake and what you do. I know you chat a lot on Twitter. You can find us on Twitter at the band Blake. You can find us on Facebook, the band Blake, or you can go to our official website, which is blakeofficial.com. Have a great tour. We'll look forward to welcoming you to our patch, and thanks a lot for your time. Thank, Thank you. you very much.